Okay, so let's start. I think uh, we will be waiting for Joshua to connect as we move on. Okay. Yeah. So last time I showed you how to select this stuff. I don't know if I showed you how to delete it, but you just right click and you go to delete or you can use letter x just select using left click use letter x delete and then to add objects you go to this add button right here or you can use shift a shift a for shortcut and then you see all these product all these uh, uh all these objects like the tubes, the circles, there's also the monkey. <laughs> monkey is just this object here. Which on this one, you can use it to help you test some materials and maybe test some modeling tools, and the sculpting or anything like that, just for testing some stuff. You have uh, splines like curves, you have uh, surfaces, nubs, surfaces saying that we uh, have meta balls and then we have our text object here okay so let me select this and delete it using uh, right mouse left mouse and then using delete or x okay so other objects here we shall look at them as we move on like the coming like the lights the sun uh, and, and these others like the reflection plane, camera, and first fields like turbulence, drug. I can use, I think, these ones when you are dealing with like flag simulation, flag simulation. So, so, flag simulation is simply creating like a flag, which is like a waving flag. Anyway, so to move on with the text editing, you just select the text and use tab, tab on your keyboard just below number one. So if you use tab, you can be able to use backspace, delete that text and you write your own text, whatever you like, whatever you like. I'll use grab, grab Tangaza for today. And then you, you left click to accept that, okay? Now, to move around the screen, last time I showed you these buttons, this one for moving like this, this one for zooming in and out, and also these ones for navigating around the, screen, the, the, the scene. So another button is the middle mouse. I don't know if I told you about the middle mouse, but it, the middle mouse also does something similar to this button here. If, if you left click and you drag, it's the same as coming in, in and using the middle mouse button. Okay. Now, if you use the middle mouse button, and uh, uh, now, first of all, let's first uh, make this text stand up. Now I'm going to use this button to move the view a bit and use, and also use the scroll mouse, scroll button to zoom out a bit and uh, use the tab button to move out of the edit mode. Okay, now I'm going to make this text stand on the this axis here, which is the X axis. You can tell it is the X axis by looking at this gizmo. This is the X, the red one, and then the green one is the Y, and then the Z. So I'm rotating this text on the X axis. So I'm going to use letter R for rotation and letter X for X axis. And I use 90, 90 on the keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees. And then left mouse click to accept that transformation. Okay. Next is we are going to uh, extrude this text, give it a bit, uh, some body. So to extrude the text, you simply use, uh, the, these two ways, you can either first right click and convert it to a mesh, 
and then use let me show you let's first duplicate it so that we have two copies uh, so to duplicate it use shift d so if we use shift d and i uh, have this other copy right now so i can use i can either left click to make it stay there or if i use ctrl z and i use shift d again i can use letter h i can accept that by left clicking and i use letter h for hide so it's there it's still there in the same collection but it is hidden you can see it and if you want to hide other objects you can use this eye here I simply now this is the whole collection so we talk, we talk about off the eye everything in the collection disappears but if you just want to hide individual objects, you can toggle on the eye, this eye icon here. All right, so next we have this copy and we have the other copy up there. So this copy. So I want to show you two ways to, I want to show you two ways to extrude the text first. Uh, we are going to extrude using a mesh. So you deal with the mesh object, but once we convert it to a mesh object, we can't edit the text again. That's why we, we duplicated this one and we have a copy. So we can come back to it. So if you right click and go to convert to mesh, right now, this will be like a mesh object. And the mesh, as I told you last time, it is just simply a collection of, uh, a collection of uh, faces, polygons, vertices, okay? So if you go to edit mode by clicking on this uh, button right here, go to edit mode. You can also use the tab button to go back to edit mode. Now this is what we call a mesh. Now we see the letter here is a mesh. Now to extrude this mesh object, uh, we are going to use modifiers. If you go to this button right here, you click modifiers. And then you can add a solidif solidify modifier, like so. So to extrude the, the modifier, you just use the th thin right here. So you have a big body like that. And then in the real world, most of the text is not so sharp with these sharp edges like that. So we need to make fix that by uh, applying some bevel. So it's a bit round on the edges. To do that, we just go back to modifiers and there's another one called a bevel modifier. Okay, so with the bevel modifier, we need to scroll down and find the bevel. This is our first modifier, solidify, and then another modifier right here. You can use this button to get more space if you have many modifiers here. And you can also move or stack the modifiers by using these buttons up or down. So now we have taken the, mod the bevel modifier up. In some cases, you might find that it is important to stack uh, them in, uh, in, in order, but I don't think it is important in this case. So if we, I open up uh, the modifier, the bevel modifier, you can add some bevel and you can also add some segments. Segments is how much of the bevel we have Okay, the more segments, the better the curve or the, the smoother it will be. I don't know if Joshua can hear us, but uh, let's continue here. We have, we have to text. The first way I said was to convert it to a mesh object and use modifiers to extrude. The other way is to use this. Uh, now in the object mode, Let's see if I can find uh, text. If I go to text down here, first of all, let's first change the font. So to change the font, you just go to font and you click on this button and you look for a font from your computer. You can download a font from the internet. Do you know download the font from the internet? I uh, know. You don't? Okay, I will show you uh, quick. So I have mine, uh, X, bold. I just click on open font, and just like that. 
the text has been the text font has been changed. Uh, so extrude if you want to extrude from the text, it is the geometry, and then there's the extrude right here from the geometry. Uh, the offset is uh, it's like in the normals, extrude in the normals. Like uh, there's a button in the, in the edit mode that I will show that I didn't show you, but it does similar stuff. That's what this one does, the extrude. So we have our extrude and there's also a bevel down here. So if I zoom in a bit, we have our sharp edges. But if we use this uh, bevel, you notice this, the sharp edges disappear. Now we have round edges, very smooth. So the resolution is how much of uh, that, be the, that bevel, how many subdivisions. If we, we reduce to zero, you notice this, uh, we still have the bevel, but it's like a cheesy. It's like, did they call it a cheesy bevel? It's kind of sharp bevel, but we still have it. If we increase the sub, this kind of subdivision, you're subdividing that, that part. So we have that, that call round edge so that when we apply some lighting, it will be cool. By the way, if we want to apply some textures or material, just click on this materials property and you click on new, okay? So when you click new, you get this stuff and you can change the color from here. Did I show you this last time? No. Okay, so that's the materials property properties. You can also add another one like that. Then you click on new. And then you change their colors. And then you can uh, go through some other properties, material properties like uh, spatula. Spatula, if you're dealing with uh, things like metals, the shiny, shiny objects, you need to learn how to use that spatula. And the roughness, if you're dealing like those rough, rough textures. And uh, yeah. Subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering uh, is, is stuff like uh, light which goes through an object. That is subsurface scattering. I think I think it is mostly used in like maybe glasses or plants. Anyway, so let me show you very quick how to download a font from the internet. You can use uh, different websites. There is one called Google Fonts. There is one called uh, Adobe Fonts, which is fonts.adobe.com and fonts.google.com. And there is, uh, there are very many websites, but some of them are costly, some of them are free. So it depends on what you are looking for. So uh, are you seeing? Uh, my browser came up, but I closed it. Are you seeing the browser? So let's try to say free font. I'm still seeing Blender. You haven't yet changed the interface of sharing. It's still Blender. OK, so you're seeing uh, my Chrome, Google Chrome? Uh, yes, now I'm seeing it. Yeah, so if I just type in free font, these are like uh, websites for free fonts. There's here one called uh, the font. This one is common. There's the one for fonts.google.com for Google Fonts. There's fontsquirrel.com. There is uh, there's one for Adobe. I think it's not in the first page. <laughs> it's outranked. And these guys, let's go to Google, Google Fonts. All right, so you, you just, this one is in dark mode. Let's try to go back to the light, light mode. So you look for a font that you like. 
You can type in the name of the font if you know it. And then you can type your sentence and see an example. So let's say you want to download this Chinese font. Just click on it. It loads in uh, on its own page. So you'll see, you just click on download family. So you get what we call a dot TTF. That's the file that you will get. Okay, this this uh, I've connected my IDM, so it's interrupting my download. But what what you'll get is called a TTF. Let's uh, let's let me see if I can find a font on my machine. Are you seeing uh, my Windows Explorer? I want to show you how to uh, install the font that you download. Okay, a font is here. This one is called Mont Serrat. And this one is Xo. You see the Xo that, uh, that you have been using is also here, Xo. So let's see, let's open the Xo font. So that is the download thing that you will get. Uh, sometimes it is a folder, sometimes it is. Okay. Sometimes it is a folder, sometimes it is a compressed file or zipped, compressed zipped folder. So let me share this again if it opens. It's right here. So we have uh, these fonts, the bold, the light, the regular, the italic. It's the, this one is the one that we call a font family. So it's the family and these are different font weights, okay? So to install, you just double click. And then you just click on install. And then when you install it, you can even install all of them at once. When you install it, it's going to go to, let me show you the folder. It's going to go to, if you go to your machine here on the local, the one where the windows is installed, if you double click to open it, you'll find under windows, We'll find a folder called fonts. That's where all your fonts are installed. Okay. So the dot TTF. Have you seen that? Yes. Okay, so let's get back to Blender. Let's finish up our animation very quick before you get disconnected again. <laughs> so all these are all my fonts right here the ones that are installed over 3,000 or more. Okay, so Blender. So we want to animate uh, this thing. You want to... So here is what we are going to do. We are going to look in the camera like this. Uh, before we you can look in the camera. Now, there's a mode here, which is called the orthographic mode. I talked about this one last time. It helps you to look, uh, look in the direction of where you want to. Now I'm looking on the right side of the text. Can you even look at the top? You can also look, look look at the sides, okay? And then you can go back to your orthographic like that by just clicking or using a middle mouse, middle mouse button. Now, to animate the text, we are going to uh, select it and we are going to go text, 
Oh, you're going to look for the properties of the text, like the transform. Uh, uh, this is not the one you're looking for. This is the selections, the selection box uh, right here. This is the one we are looking for. This is the one that contains the object properties. So it contains the location, rotation, and the scale. So it can be able to animate the rotation, the position like that. Yes, I want to use Control Z to undo that move. And also you animate the rotation like that. So I'm going to uh, use to uh, to open up our our timeline. Then we are going to use this button here for auto keying. So I use that button to auto key. And then I move. I first I want to first give it some kind of a movement right here. Okay. But before we do that, uh, let's go like here. And uh, let's rotate this a bit. So I don't know if our keyframe is there. But it seems like it's, it has not gone there, the keyframe. So why is that? Because you can, you can also use keyframes like this, like clicking gear. So I'll undo that. Let's go back to what we had when the text was still standing. So I go back to zero. I'm going to use this instead. Rotation. Position. And after 40 frames, I'm going to give uh, other keyframes here. So if I go back to the zero, Notice we haven't made an animation, but if I go back to this keyframe, I can I can do what we call replacing the keyframes by by making by putting in uh, by applying my transformations. So I've replaced those keyframes by this this uh, this animation that I have made. Okay. And you can even break those text down by, by if you go back to this one for the mesh, you can break uh, each of these text in single ones. So for example, let's, let's, uh, let's hide this very quick. Let's bring back this one very quick. So right click and you go to, sorry, first go to edit mode and then right click. And you go to separate, separate by those parts. Those will be broken down into letter by letter. Okay, so you can get this letter and you can use letter R for rotation. And if you, if you go back to object mode, you can select each letter and use R for rotation and rotate each letter individually. Okay, but that will take some time. So I'm not going to do that for, for this class. So I'll undo that. Uh, I'll undo that and go back to our text. This one. So not right now, if I scrub through, we have this animation. Okay. So if we go back to our camera, let's see. Now, this is not what we are looking for. So here is what we are going to do. If I scroll, if I scroll out like that, I can select the camera. And I can use the move to move it down. I want it to look into the text. Okay, so I can rotate it like that. I rotate it on like this. Let me see. Okay, now it's looking away. Now I don't know if I can use these buttons. 
Yeah, I can use these buttons while I'm looking through the camera. I can use this one. Oh, sorry, not that one. I can use the, let me see the camera itself. I can move it. If I if I use letter N, letter N, grab Tangaza. <laughs> You can go this. You can use these transformation tools. Example position on the y, position on the x. So right now we, we are not moving the text. We are moving the camera. So we are moving the camera so that it looks straight to look straight in the, in the text. So I want, I want to do some rotation. Re remove this rotation by putting later. By putting zero, uh, this one zero. Actually, I'm going to leave that one and this one zero. Okay, so I'm going to use X again uh, to move back the text. So if we want, we can also animate the camera. As you can see, we have keyframes already because we had auto key keying on. Okay, but you can delete this stuff by by drag. If you just left click and drag, select that. Let's see if you can use X to delete these keyframes. Okay, so you don't have any more keyframes on the camera, but you still have our keyframes on the text. So here is what we can do. We can. Uh, use the camera again uh, to take it down take it like and to, to zoom in a bit and also so we are going to create some kind of animation where this text is like coming in is driving through the camera so like maybe like that let's try it again let's extend the camera again so it's the text i want the text to be really close to the camera Okay, so it brings up that cinematic look. So I'm going to zoom in. Sorry, zoom in using uh, the Y axis like that. Okay, and uh, at last, we are going to do some little an camera animation. So from like here, we are going to use auto keying. And then we are going to zoom out on the y axis. Now, auto king doesn't seem to have worked. But here is what we can do. If we can, if we leave the camera where it is, maybe just just up a bit like this. So it's, the text is in the center. And then there's this rotation that is bugging me. I don't know if I take it to zero, what happens? I don't even know where my text going. But uh, what I want us to do is, uh, I want us to make sure that we can see the whole text. So I'm going to use, I'm going to, to select the camera. I'm going to first uh, use letter N to hide these tools. And then uh, I click on the camera button to zoom out of the camera. And then one last thing is I want to zoom the to animate that camera going out. So now, now I think now it has worked. The auto king has worked. So right there, I want to zoom out like that. Okay, so if I look back into the camera like this, we have that text and then we have the camera animation. So our camera animation, uh, we need to zoom out again and also need to center the text like that and the rotation. Sorry, not this one. As this one. So the rotation. 
I want it to be like that. So if I use uh, uh, letter Z, can move the camera again and then use uh, Y. I'm just clicking using the left mouse button and dragging. Okay, but you can type in whatever. Okay, so now we have uh, our camera animation and then we have our text animation first and then our camera zoom out animation. Okay. So that's the animation we have so far. And in the last video, I showed you how to export the animation. So here is what we are going to do. If I zoom out and I go to the shading, shading our workspace, this one shows you how your text will look like. Now, if you remember, right here, in the materials, sorry, in the materials, we created uh, something blue, was it a blue, green texture? But you can also use the node editor. This one is called the node editor to create uh, textures. So just click on node, use inputs and shaders. Okay. And you can also use images. If you have an image, I don't know what this one can drag it here to create your first node. Then you can connect that node, other nodes. So this is the shading. This one will show you, and it, it automatically goes into this mode, the viewport shading mode. It shows you the whole look of your texture. This one, this one is the view. This one is not the viewport. Term. This one is the, is, is the one, the look that helps you to see the kind of uh, lighting, the whole lighting, how it's going to be. So let's first go back to our layout and zoom out. So this is our lighting. This is our light right now. But as, as I said, as I showed you earlier, we can go to objects and add a light like the sun. So if we add the sun and we go back to shading mode, uh, now the sun is like behind here, but it's supposed to light through every, uh, everything here. As you can see, now the text is a bit clearer, okay? Now, this mode, this mode is, I, I, I must say this mode is a bit advanced. We shall look at this kind of text in a later video. But uh, that's how you are going to create a, a animation on the camera and also animation in the objects. Okay. Now, if you want to do some modeling, you need to learn uh, those other tools. For example, if I added a uh, um, tube, maybe you can create a table for this text. If I added a tube, I use the middle mouse uh, button to navigate like this, select the tube and use S for scale. You can scale all of it, or you can go to this tool right here, scale. Then I can scale like this, scale like this. Now, introducing the editing tools, if I use, uh, tab button to go into edit mode or just select the edit mode from here and then let's hide this timeline get more space for these tools you can use a tool like uh, the loop cut so if i click and drag i can move the cut like there click and left click and drag to create another cut like that and then i click right here to create that cut and also this cut okay so this is like the basics of editing uh, of modeling an object all right so now we have this we can uh, extrude this uh, these edges right now we are in this mode right here it's called the vertex mode so i see those points if you go to edges you see the lines okay if you go to faces, you can be able to select the faces. 
can go back and do a move tool or the selection. You can select this uh, this edge and this edge. At first, it was a whole face. Okay, sorry, not a not a edge, but face. Uh -huh. At first, it is it was a whole face, but now since we have put in these cuts, now we have many faces. Okay, so we can extrude some of those faces like this. I hold down shift, select another face, hold down shift, select that face, hold down shift, select the fourth. And then I use extrude right here. So I told you I was going to show you how to use the extrude. <laughs> so I just click on extrude and you move the mouse. And just like that, you have a table for our grab the Gaza text to sit on or you can you can also use those modifiers like the bevel modifier uh to to put some bevel on this text on this table or on other objects any object that you are working with okay so you can see you can increase a segment and then you see we have some nice round table so you can go back to object mode okay and uh, since we have an animation there let's just leave it to that so that's the basics of modeling and uh, if you want you can even create a quick quick chair just using the same techniques scale down and move this first move this one away by using the move tool and then uh, this just like this so select this and go to edit mode sorry not the sculpt mode but edit mode and then i want to apply more cuts you can also use this one called the off offset edge loop cut so, offset now offset any loop cut will work when you do like this when you have many many edges to cut through that's 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 when it will work you can also select those edge loop cuts and you scale them or you extend them using that tool so here's what i wanted to do what i want to do is do add some more cuts and uh, if you select if you go back to the selection you go to faces you select this edge this face and this this one and use the extrude like that and uh, if you go down here, you select these faces using shift. You hold down shift, select the rest of the faces, and you extrude those. And just like that, we have our chair. So let's go back to object mode and move it. So I can rotate it on the, is it the X? No, it's not the X, I guess it's the, it's supposed to be the Z. So I rotate it on the Z axis. So that it's rotating on the, on, the on the side of the table. And then you can re reduce the size of the chair by just using S for scale. And you can use Shift, Shift D to duplicate that and you move it on the X axis and you rotate it on the z axis like so okay that is the classroom we have built a classroom but uh, for detailed modeling those are the same tools that you can use even for modeling a face use those same tools in the edit mode these ones okay so if you don't have uh, any questions for today, I think we we'll call it a lesson. And then we can look at at rigging, character rigging next 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 class.
Um, uh, for today, I have no questions. Only that I've uh, found the modeling part very interesting, mostly like excluding parts. Because uh, mm. me, at first, I thought that you had to uh, like make like a leg, like one leg by leg. Then uh, after seeing how you just add, um, how you just uh, sculpt or like make up some, uh, for example, a table, uh, how easy it is, uh, all that's very interesting. Uh, but for today, I have no questions. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. I was also, I, was, I also thought it is very hard, but you can find it very interesting if you do some practice. Now, for example, let's first let's create one last stuff here. How is our tube? I'm creating a tube, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, because we are in edit mode. Now, when you add objects file in edit mode, that object will be uh, included as, as another object. You, I mean, like, if you add an object in the edit mode while selecting this one, it will be included as, as the same object. Okay, so let's see. Let's see, this one is hidden. If, it, if we unhide it and we create a tube, um. <laughs> we have gone, I think we almost got disconnected. I thought we had, we were disconnected, but we are not. I uh, I think uh, my blender has just closed itself. But uh, I just wanted to show you a quick one of how to create a car. But you can use the same techniques by extruding the faces, and then you can scale scale down some of those faces. So I think we we'll, we'll meet next time. Is there any any specific thing that you would like us to cover next time? Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe like uh, having a background. Uh, for example, if you're making an animation, yeah, and then you don't you want to have a specific background. For example, you're making an animation about a classroom. You'd like to have like the wall, and then maybe chats on the wall. So mm. I think that's what I want to do next. So you see, you saw how we put together some kind of a scene with a chair and the table, right? Yes. So to to get a background, you just simply create like a big box, and you you use that one like a room. So on that big box, you can select those different edges or faces and you apply various textures on them okay or you can put together or you can model each by each, each you can model frames those frames those photo frames and you can model all different stuff and then you bring it together in one in one like one room or one box that tube that acts like a room okay yeah. that's simply how you will create those backgrounds we'll look at that maybe next time that's a cool one Okay. All right. So thank you so much for joining. So I hope to see you next time. I think it will be Friday, right? Friday at two. Yes. Yes. So make sure you do some practice. Huh? Okay. Yeah.